In today's free software review, we're going to be using Blender's Grease Pencil. Not gonna lie, I was a bit intimidated about trying this one out, but after you get used to using Blender's interface, using the Grease Pencil is actually really cool. Let's hop into today's video. To me, Blender's Grease Pencil feels kind of like Photoshop, but with the 3D aspect. You can draw your lines on different layers, and there's many tools that can help you edit your lines to get them exactly the way you want them. What I think is the hardest part about using the grease pencil is the setup and just getting adjusted to Blender's interface. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to open up Blender and I'm going to click General. Some simple navigation commands, holding your middle mouse and moving your cursor around can rotate your middle mouse scroller can zoom in and out and hitting control plus your middle mouse and moving your mouse forward or back can also control the zooming. You can also control the zooming by this little magnifying glass here. If you click it, hold down and then move your mouse in and out, holding down your middle mouse and holding down shift can pan around the screen. You can also pan with this little hand here if you click and hold and drag your cursor around. Okay, now that you can navigate, we can get rid of this cube. So I'm in object mode and I have this cube selected. I'm going to hit X on my keyboard and click delete. I'm going to go to add grease pencil blank. And now we have a grease pencil object in our outliner. I'm going to go to this plus up here and add the 2D animation tab. And it's gonna look like this. And in our show overlays, I'm going to make sure that 3D cursor is checked. So now we have our 3D cursor back at the origin. And I'm gonna make sure that canvas is checked. This is gonna help us have a better idea of where we're drawing in our viewport shading i'm going to select this last one so that we'll see our object the way it will look rendered now there's a bunch of tabs on the right side here in the tab here which is the world properties tab i can change the color of the background so i'm going to go to color i'm going to slide this up and maybe a little pink i don't know i think that's good and after doing that, I'm going to go to this little camera icon here, which is your render properties. And I'm going to go all the way down to color management and I'm gonna change this view transformed from filmic to standard. Now we can see the actual color we selected. If I hit zero on my numpad, I'm gonna see the rendered view. This is how, this is the space that's gonna get rendered when we export our animation. I'm going to go here to my output properties and I'm going to change this to be a square. I just wanted it to be in a square format and I'm going to change my frame start to be zero instead of one and I'm going to move my little playhead here to frame zero. Now in our object data properties here, I'm going to add a new layer. These layers, pretty much work like layers in Photoshop. We need a layer to start our drawing on. And I'm going to rename this layer line art. And I'm going to go into our material properties, which is where you'll be adding all of your colors. So I'm going to click new. Because I'm using this particular color for outlines, I'm going to keep the stroke checked and it's black by default, which is fine. I'm going to rename this color lines. So basically try to think of these materials as color swatches. Okay, so now I can go over here and change the stroke placement from origin to 3D cursor. So the strokes that we draw will be placed where our 3D cursor is and not necessarily be stemming out from the origin. And for our drawing plane, I'm going to change it from view to front and notice how that changes the orientation of our canvas. 
I'm going to hit one on my noon pad. And now we're totally facing the front of our 3D space. So I'm just going to start drawing now. Okay, so to start drawing, make sure that you're in draw mode. I think I'll use a box. I'll make my box maybe this big and I'll have to hit enter when I'm done. I think I'm going to leave it like that and I'm going to go to edit mode and I'm going to select this point at the corner and I'm going to hit shift S and select cursor to select it. So now my 3D cursor is at this exact point and now I'm going to draw the side of the box. So I'm going to go back to draw mode. Our 3D cursor is still at that corner, which is perfect. And I'm going to go to side. So I'm going to hit three on my noon pad. And now we're drawing at the side view. So keeping this as a reference point, I'm going to make my box a little long. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to go back here and change this to top. And I'm going to hit seven on my new pad. I'm gonna just fill in the gap here. Uh, yeah, press enter. All right, and now I have my box. Beautiful. So I won't walk you through the rest of this since this is just a review. But if you can set up your scene and understand how to utilize the canvas in the 3D cursor, there are endless possibilities. Now for my review. For how accessible it is, 5 out of 5. It's free and available for Windows, Mac OS, you could even download it on Steam. For how easy it is to grasp, 3.5 out of 5. I think it could be a little overwhelming to look at if it's your first time using any sort of 3D software with all of the different panels and settings. I think it was a little easier for me to understand since I've used Maya and ZBrush before, which visually look similar to Blender. But even so, there's lots of documentation from Blender's developers and users alike. YouTube has a lot of really cool Blender tutorials, which is how I'm even able to make this video right now. I've only watched about four Blender tutorials over the span of maybe two to three days, and I'm able to make this video, so it's totally doable. It just takes some time. And for its flexibility to different styles, four out of five. The grease pencil is actually pretty amazing. I think it has lots of potential for making various different things. With so many different brushes and options, it's possible to make freehand designs or something a bit more precise by using the shapes, lines, or arcs that are offered in the toolbar. I'm really excited to have tried this out and I'm really looking forward to continuing learning how to use this and to someday be able to make something really awesome with this software and specifically with the grease pencil tool. I'm definitely going to make a video talking about making 2D animation in Blender because I also tried that out and it's actually pretty good. So look out for that. And if you guys have any other specific software you want me to try out, please leave that in the comments. This video was actually done because of a comment I received. So yeah, I do look at the comments guys. Please, uh, if you have a specific software you want me to try out, totally write that down and I will get to it eventually. Thank you so much for watching. Have a totally awesome day and I'll see you next time.